probably one of the most impactful things that Christ did in my life and changed. And up until just about three years ago, nobody ever knew this. I never shared it. I carried around with me my whole life and I flew home and I called Dottie. I said, I've got to talk to you alone. Then I had my children come home. Then I had my best friends. From six to 13 years old, For seven years, I was homosexually raped, four to five times a week sometimes. And my parents wouldn't stop it. It was a man, his name was Wayne Bailey. When I was six years old, he was hired on the farm to be a cook and a housekeeper. And from that time on, remember my mother went downtown shopping or my parents went away for the weekend or on vacation. My mother would always grab me kind of like this and march me right into this man. And I remember fighting as a little six-year-old. And she'd make me stand in front of him. She'd say, now you obey Wayne. You do everything he tells you to do. And if you're disobedient, you will get a thrashing when I get home. So what do you do as a six-year-old, seven, eight, nine? You do what Wayne Bailey tells you. At nine years old and 12 years old, I got up the courage and I went and told my mother, and she wouldn't believe me. I, you can't put into words how you feel at nine and 12 years old. It's like your whole world collapses. And I think the biggest emotion I have, which I have to this day, is fear, fear. If I'm in a room alone, even today, years later, if I'm in a room alone focusing on something like writing and a man walks into that room, I can't explain it. There's an instant fear that grips me. Maybe just five seconds, but sometimes it leaves me exhausted. I don't, I don't understand it. But uh, at 13, I was playing football and working on the farm, I was fairly strong, and my parents had gone somewhere with my mother. And this man approached me in the living room from behind. He reached out to put his arm on my shoulder, and I swung around, cut my hand behind his neck, and pushed him up against the wall. And I threatened him. I said, if you ever touch me again, I will kill you, and I would have. He never touched me again. I'm so thankful I came to know Christ as Savior Lord. Because if I had enough, I got everything in my life to be a total dysfunctional individual. Between an alcoholic father, a dysfunctional mother, my parents never went beyond the second grade. After I trusted Christ, I had to tell someone, boy, you ever had that feeling, you know, I just, no matter what it is, I've got to tell someone. It's not that you're looking for answers or anything, you just, you got to get it out. So I called up the man who had led me to Christ, drove over, sat in his office for at least 45 minutes. He must have wondered why I was there. And finally, after about 45, I just blurted it out, and he believed me. Oh, that was like being born again, again. He believed me. And for six months, that man mentored me, right from the scriptures. This is when I developed such a deep conviction that truly God's Word, the Bible, the Word of God, is powerful when used by the Holy Spirit. It changes life. It changed my life in specific areas. At the end of that six months, I knew He was going to say it. I didn't want to hear it. Oh, I didn't want to hear it. But I knew He was going to say it when He said, Josh, you need to forgive Him. I said, no way. I want Him to burn in hell, and I'll escort Him there. But here again, I knew the Bible was true, and I knew God commanded it, and I knew it would not only be pleasing to God, it would be the best for me if God commanded it. So I did it. But I always like to point out, I had no good feeling about it. I wanted that man to burn in hell. I did it out of obedience, out of faith, with no feeling whatsoever, and knocked on the door, and when he opened the door, I didn't waste words. I just said, Wayne, what you did to me was evil, very evil, and you know it. But I've come to know Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and I've come here to tell you, oh, let me tell you, 
What I told him, I didn't want it to be true. I knew it was true, but I didn't want it to be. I said, Wayne, I've come to here to tell you that Jesus died as much for you as he did for me. I forgive you. Based upon what Jesus Christ did on the cross in dying for the sins of the world. If I hadn't have done that, I would have ruined my marriage, my relationship with my children. I've come a long ways by the grace of God. I still got a lot of struggles. And it seems that God has left certain things in my life, which you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm kind of thankful for it because every day I have a reminder of how much God has done in my life through the Holy Spirit. And that develops a pretty deep conviction.